Spelljammer got an F on its reviews. What went wrong? The terrible innovation on its product design is the reason for it to be considered the worst 5e pro book ever released. How do we know that? Well, there are 42 5th edition books released with over 1,000 reviews each in Amazon. 10 of them score 4.9, other 24 score 4.8, which is also the average and the median scores. Five of them score 4.7 and only two books score 4.6. And then, alone and way behind, there's a spell jammer with a blunt 4.4. Its buyers have made it loud and clear. It's a bad product, or at least much worse than any other 5e book, and I cannot imagine that such a bad review have not impacted sales. Wait, you don't agree that Spelljammer is the worst D&D product released by Wizards? Tell us why on the comments below. Do we have reason to believe, better saying, to fear, other D&D products may suffer from the awful choices made for Spelljammer? Well, yes and no. Yes, because I believe the drivers behind such a product design are just too strong for wizards not giving it at least another shot. And yes, a very strong candidate for that is Planescape, the only setting to be released in 2023. And no, because the reaction for that product was so strong, and by that I'm certainly not referring to mean tweets, that it makes a robust reason to believe adjustments will be made. Spelljammer was one of the most expected product releases for 5e. After all, 3e barely mentioned the setting, and 4e gave it only a few pages within a supplement called The Plane Above, Secrets of the Astral Sea. The last true supplement for the setting had been released way back in 93. Veteran players would always speak of these adventures and wacky setting, with spaceships and talking hippopotamus dressed in 19th century explorer's outfits. The anticipation was hyped, and even a vinyl soundtrack was released, Spell Jams. You can find that in Spotify, Spotify and whatnot. And even so, it was a total flop. What went wrong? That's easy to answer. It's an overpriced product, tagged 50% higher compared to other D&D products, regardless of which country you live in. You would think that for such a price, it would deliver more content, but it's quite the opposite. Its slim 192 pages is only more than the first two published 5e adventures and the Sword Coast Adventures Guide. That's over 20% less pages than the average 5e product. Well, that's a blunt math, and the customers gave as blunt a response to that. What exactly did wizards try to do and why? In economics and business, there's a couple of terms for that. What they were trying to do was testing the customer's willingness to pay, or see what would happen with the price elasticity of the demand at a higher price point. Frankly, wizards knew they would sell less products if they were to set it at a higher price. The real question was, would they make more money? Of course, if you were to tag a similar product to what we're used to with a 50% higher price, their reaction would be equivalent to barbarians storming the gate. So, how do you do that? How do you pull that trick? by changing the product design so it's not a direct comparison. You divide the same content in three books, you add a pretty damn screen, you put all of that on a bookcase. And I would guess all of that does increase the printing, the printing costs by some 50%. But let's be frank here, there's no way that's the most relevant cost of such a product. Costs of distribution and marketing are probably much higher than printing costs. And both those costs for Spelljammer had no reason to be exactly the same of any other D&D product. What Wizards tried to do was pulling a double backflip. They tried to sell fewer units for a much higher price, betting the end game would be much higher revenues. And even if that didn't work, they bet they would profit more anyways as the Spelljammer product margin was much higher, because its cost relative to its price is much lower than other products. 
bluntly, I think Wizards was testing, testing the waters to see if they could sell D&D products for a much higher price. And given the terrible product review, it seems to me that they have drowned. Or at least, it became clear they went too far. Obviously, it's not a matter only of page count, but the consequential lack of content of so few pages. For a first shot at the fantasy sci-fi subgenre, the books lack everything, from character backgrounds to spells, from locations, which are the heart of any setting, to ship-to-ship -ship combat rules. This last one is hard to understand, given that Ghost of Saltmarsh had already brought rules for naval combat. Last but not least, the Spelljammer adventure is too short for a published adventure and too long for the pages it steals from what could have been further setting development. I can't help to think that the whole product design was a gross mistake, and whoever pushed that idea inside the corporation must have gone through some awkward moments with its results. There are two other products that are just too similar for a price comparison with Spelljammer, and each of them with three books and a DM screen. The Core Rules gift set and the Expanded Rules gift set. Prices vary according to what country you're in, but the Core Rules books gift set price is some 60% higher than Spelljammer, and you get five times, yes, you heard it, five freaking times as much content with its 992 pages. As for the Expanded Rules, its price is around twice as much as Spelljammer, and you still get three times and a third more content with its 640 pages. Wizards probably thought that customers would compare the full price of those similar products, which would position Spelljammer at a lower price point, and not take into account their immense difference in delivery of content. In hindsight, it's frankly laughable that someone inside Wizards would really believe they would get away with such a cheap pricing slide of hands. Point is, there's no easier way of making money than pushing the price tag to the very limit. And that's too strong a drive for me to believe that Wizards will not try to do that again. So yes, I think it's not, not, it's not the last time we'll see a D&D product with such a format and its associated price tag. What makes me a bit optimistic about this new product format is that it doesn't take much to change its design from a lame pricing magic trick into a naturally good product for D&D fans. Wanna see? Imagine its three books were an 160-page campaign guide, an 120-page adventure, and a 60-page monster menagerie, totaling some 340 pages with the same content quality we've seen in recent settings. For that same Spelljammer price tag, would you buy it if you had the money? I myself wouldn't appreciate it if, if all products were like that, but for a product I wanted once a year, I would buy it with no complaints. So, let's hope that D&D fans have spoken where it hurts the most, Wizards' pockets, and that if this product format is used again, especially if we're talking about Planescape, that it delivers what we came to love in D&D. Outstanding content.